A little disclaimer here before you start watching the video you're about to see. I am not a mechanic or an expert on cars. I'm simply a guy like you guys are watching that likes to work on my own vehicles where I can, save a dollar, do things myself so that I can be in control of the products that go on or in my car. Uh, I know what their lifespan is, I know what their quality is because I put them in there. Uh, and I can save a dollar or two doing it and sometimes I really enjoy doing these things. Um, use this as informational guide kind of thing, just a general um, idea how you might be able to accomplish this as well. But um, I'm not a mechanic and I'm not an expert, so always rely on common sense and make sure you know what you're doing before you start any kind of a project. Thanks, guys. Hello, guys. Today, we're going to be replacing the brakes on this car right here. I'm going to start off with the front and we'll move to the back. I'll do the front and back in separate videos. This is a 2015 Volvo S60. Uh, it has about 43, 44,000 miles on it, something like that. And when I get off the highway at highway speeds and um, have to brake pretty hard to get onto that off ramp, it has that little bit of a pulsing feel to it. Oh, sorry, I shook the camera there. Um, and I don't like that. It's probably hard spots or something like that developing in the rotors. I don't know. But um, we're going to repla be replacing those, and I'm going to show you how to replace the front brakes in this car. Now, if you haven't seen my previous unboxing video, we're going to be using these rotors. These are Max Brakes um, Elite Black uh, coated rotors. And we'll be using the carbon ceramic pads that go with them. That's a meaty set of pads right there, I'll tell you what. Um, that have a built-in soft backing plate that I believe is supposed to be there to help prevent squeaks from happening. So they don't send you on these any tubes of that uh, lubricant that you normally get, the anti-squeak stuff, um, because it's the pat, the backing plate is actually designed to prevent those squeaks. So first thing you want to do is make sure you're not wearing something you want to destroy because, you know, it's a car, you're going to get dirty. And then uh, get the parking brake set and get your at least your front tire, one of your front tires up in the air on jacks and jack stands. So we're going to do that and we'll come right back. Okay, have the car up in the air and supported on jack and jack stand. Uh, you know, safety first. These have these caps, this, this set of rims has these caps over the lug nuts. Um, I like to do something like take a paint stick just gently start prying those off instead of using a, um, they just need to be wiggled a little bit to loosen them and they'll come right off. Instead of using a screwdriver or something that can scratch them. This is a really cheap paint stick, so it's trying to break on me. I've had it sitting forever in the garage. But if this one will work, anything will work. So. Do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, lug nuts off and set the tire aside. Okay, tire is off. Uh, visual inspection of everything else so far looks really good. Next, we've got to remove the caliper and the caliper bracket. We also have to remove this uh, clip for the, uh, it's like a brake pad retainer clip. And on the back side, where your calipers go in, we get you a flashlight here. You can see on the end of these, there's a little rubber cap there. We just have to remove that rubber cap. And there goes my flashlight under the car. So, there you go, those rubber cap just comes right off. And that seals the uh, pin that color per pin there so that dirt can't get in there is one on the top and one on the bottom down here and you just take those caps off and set them aside okay next is to remove this pin 
make sure you know how the orientation goes these push against here to create a pressure it's like a spring and it keeps the it just keeps the caliper from wobbling around I'm gonna just pop that right out and these I remember this has little tabs on the end of there so you got to push this in so let me get both hands on this okay hopefully you guys can see this to remove this these spots right here have a little pin that goes in like that like a little l shape to help keep them from falling out you basically have to squeeze this and then pull out at the same time see there's a little there's a little l piece that holds it in place um and remember the orientation on these this goes in here putting them back on will be in reverse you set this here and kind of push up against that until you can slot these little l pieces right into the holes there so we're going to set that aside and move on to the next spot we're going to have to remove these uh caliper pins so let me see what size we need for that all right this pin here and this pin here use a T45 Torx. You may need a small extension to get into it. They should be pretty easy to break loose and remove. You just got to keep turning until they this uh, caliper um, screws into the caliper uh, guide here or retainer, whatever you want to call it. So you just got to keep going with this until it comes out both top and bottom. Let me get the bottom one loosened up. And that came loose quite easily. So I'm going to get those removed and we'll be back. I don't want to have to sit here and bore you guys with watching me undo that. Okay, so you see that pin right there? That's the one I was loosening. And if you look right down in there, there's the back side of it where it screwed into the plate um, you have to pull this out so that you know it has been released which can be kind of hard one thing I like to do is as you're turning this pull out at the same time and that gives you a little bit of leverage to use see if I can do that with the bottom one and you'll see it start coming out and then you know because your whole caliper will start wiggling and uh, you can start removing it. So I'm gonna take that caliper, set it off to the side, and either hang it or set it right here. Hang on just a second. All right, I am ready to remove the caliper. Might need a screwdriver to pry uh, a little bit against this to help get it off. These can get in there pretty good. The pads, um, the, this develops a lip on it right here, so the pads kind of have to squeeze past that. So you just kind of got to wiggle it off. Once you get it started, it comes off pretty easily though. I'm going to take this brake pad right here, just pops out. There are clips that hold it in the piston right here. While you've got it, you want to make sure it's dry. There's no signs of leakage or anything like that on your piston there. And I'm going to set this off to the side. Uh, and if this will sit here nicely, I'll just let it stay. I think this will sit here quite nicely on the dust shield, so I don't have to really do anything extra with that. Now, I've got to get this off right here. Can't see it. This ca uh, uh, retainer, oh, got to remove the brake pad. It just slides right in place. I've got to remove this, which I think those are like 17 millimeter bolts or something like that back there. Let me get the stuff set up, and I will let you know. Alrighty, let's see if we can get you back here to see this. These bolts right here, this one, and this one down here are 18 millimeter, and I'm going to give you a heads up on these. I've had these calipers off before because I put a little bit of paint on there just to test this out and see how this paint looked and lasted. Mine are going to come out okay because I've had it out before. If this is the first time you're taking this off from the factory, you cannot do this. You're going to fight with these because these bolts are going to have like a yellow thread locker or a red thread locker or something on there. 
and it's gonna you're gonna have to crank on this thing and crank on this thing until you get them out so just be prepared it's not faulty it's just that these things have thread locker when I removed them out uh, when I removed this I used a wire brush and cleaned off all that thread locker because I don't like that crap now what you do is up to you you can put thread locker back on it's not a bad idea it's just gonna make it hard to get out uh, if you need to later um, I knew I was going to be removing these caliper guides, so I did not do that, um, specifically because I wanted to have an easy time getting these off when I got back around to it. See, and that comes off quite easily now that I'm prepared. These bolts are the same, so I can set them aside, and this guide right here just comes right out. And this, you are definitely want to want to make sure you know how it goes back on. It just sets right back in place on top of your rotor, like this. Nothing special, but uh, if you're in doubt, make sure you take plenty of pictures of stuff. I'm going to set this off to the side, and then next we have to remove the rotor. Before we move on to removing the uh, caliper here, I wanted to, I mean the uh, rotor here, I wanted to stop on this real quick. While you've got this out, pull both of these pins out and inspect them. Take a look at this, make sure it's not dirty. If it's dirty, wipe it off. Take a paper towel, wipe it off real good. Make sure there's it's clean as could be. And then put a small amount of lube like uh, I'm going to use a copper anti-seize on this, but a real any good high temperature lube you could get away with using. If this is dirty, take a uh, some brake clean or whatever you need to and clean this off. If they're scored or pitted or grooved, replace them. They're only a few bucks, and these really this is what your brakes slide in and out on. As your brake pad wears, that caliper has to come in further closer to your rotor. And it slides on these as it does that and as you hit the brakes and release the brakes. If this pin is scored, it can get hung up in one of those grooves and not release properly, which can cause your brakes to heat up and overheat, can boil the um, liquid and the brake fluid inside, all kinds of nasty things that can happen. <laughs> it's five bucks or so for one of these. so. Replace, just replace them. I mean, it, it, it's uh, if if in doubt, replace them. So um, mine are of course still in good shape because I just had them out recently and inspected them. They usually don't go bad unless that cap was off the back or they've just been really um, not not taken very good care of. So onward to this, we just have a single little screw that's holding that in place, and it is a T50. I don't know why they couldn't have used a T45 here and here, or two T50 here and here. I don't, I don't like having to use two different things, but that comes out quite easily. This is the first time I've ever had this out, and it comes out really easily. It's not very long. All it does is kind of hold that thing in place. See, it's a real small thing. Set that off to your side. Now, your rotor should come right off. And you may have to get uh, something to persuade it. Because if you can see all that stuff falling off, rust falls down on there. You get rust on the inside of these things. And they just kind of weld themselves in place. So before I do anything, I'm going to take a wire brush and clean all of this up so when I put my new rotor on, it's got a clean mating surface. That's it. We are done removing the stuff. Now it's just cleaning stuff up and putting it back on. Alrighty. So we have this cleaned up nicely with a little bit of wire brush and sandpaper. And I have a small amount of copper anti-seize on there just so when you put the new rotor on, it doesn't have a tendency for the metals to stick together. Um, it'll help it if I ever change this another, you know, 100,000 miles from now. And one thing you do want to do is set your old rotor or set your new rotor on top of your old rotor. Make sure they're the same size. 
Um, this car, for instance, comes with two different size rotors you can have in the front. This one is the most common, the other one is pretty rare, but it can you can find them occasionally, depending on what you've got. Um, next thing, now for this, isn't, it isn't as important because this comes with a special coating already on it to protect the metal. But I'm going to spray a little bit of brake clean on a cloth, on a paper towel, and wipe it down before I put these back on. On standard, non-coated rotors, that's a bare metal. If you don't coat it with something, it's going to rust pretty quickly. They ship to you from the manufacturer with a small amount of manufacturing oil on them to keep that rust away. So you definitely want to take some brake clean, spray them down thoroughly, and wipe them clean to get all that oil off. You do not want that oil on when you're trying to bed your pads into the new rotor surface. So make sure they're nice and clean when you put them on. So I'm going to take this. They're pretty heavily heavy. It's I mean these are hard to pick up one-handed. You can do it, but I'm gonna put that on there and uh, start that screw in to hold it in place. Alrighty, so this is the little hole right here that the screw goes in, and that's down at the bottom. So I want to set that down there like so. Move my little. Uh, thing out of the way that I was sitting on and uh, wiggle that back into place there line it up and there we go And this hole is chamfered, it's angled, so that as you tighten it off, if it's off by just a tiny bit, as you tighten it down, it pulls itself and centers itself. Now our new rotor is on there, and it looks good, doesn't it? So now we go back in in reverse order. We remount this. Oh no, which way did it go? <laughs> we remount to this and then put this on there and put the pins in. So let me clean all my parts up and we'll start reassembling. Alrighty, so when we set our caliper retainer or guide or whatever, it goes behind these things here. As you see the bolt just slides through there. It just sits right down on here. And I am going to, once I get my canister here, Put a tiny bit of anti-seize on these bolts versus thread locker. That's just how I roll. Let's get one started in there. And then I'll get the other started in there. And these, I know that there's a torque spec on these guys. I do not have it. You're going to have to look that up. Uh, but these need to be tightened pretty heavily. These you, you want to make sure this holds your caliper in, so you might want to make sure it never comes out unless you take it out. So um, I'm gonna get these put back on, and we will tighten that down. All right, I have my next step that I need to perform, and that would be putting my. Um, brake pads in the place and I've put a little bit of lubricant on these contact points here. I don't think it's needed for this particular car. Let's see, how did that go like that? So this just sits in here, pushes back in place. And you know one thing I've got to do, I've got to take this piston and push it in. I completely forgot about that. These brake uh, pads are going to be a lot thicker than the old ones, so I've got to push that piston back in, and I have a brake pad compression tool that I use for that. I'll show you how that works. 
Okay, this just costs a couple of bucks and it is absolutely awesome. Basically what you do is take an old pad and I don't have to have the one that clips in. I can just take this one because it just has to sit up there. And I have this that sits in here and uh, uses these pieces here as uh, kind of backstops. And then I tighten this up until it makes contact with the brake pad. And then all I've got to do is slowly turn it and it will push that piston back in. You might want to take uh, a look underneath the hood as you're doing this and making sure you're not causing too much brake fluid to bubble back up inside your brake reservoir too. If you have filled the reservoir recently, you may need to have like a turkey baster type thing or something to remove a little bit of fluid, brake fluid from your reservoir so it doesn't burble over the top. I've already looked at mine and I know it's in good shape and I'm not pushing a whole lot back up into the system. system. So I've just got to push this piston back until it hits the stop. And then I've got a lot more room to be able to mount my pads in the caliper. Okay, and you know when it stops, it's just an instant stop. Okay, so the piston is all the way back up in there. Now, I can clip this in place. I take this. Again, not necessary, really. This just slides right on, sits right onto there. But these slide points here, I'm going to put a tiny bit of anti-seize on these spots where it slides. You don't want but just a tiny bit because you don't want it getting on your rotor. Set that into place. I'm going to do the same thing on the little tabs on this. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. You can always take your finger and wipe it off if you get too much. And then, it's just a matter of taking this sliding it in place and then uh, once it's in place I gotta lube my pins up and put those in so well, let me get that stuff ready and I'll be right back alright I got these pins started back in and that's actually one of the hardest things in uh, the process so far because you don't always know when they're starting. You can't see back there. So you gotta just kind of feel around and hope you get the thing started and just push harder and wiggle around and eventually you'll get them one started. I, I started with the top one and then I worked my way to the bottom one. And these, I don't know what the torque spec exactly, but I know they have to be tightened pretty decent, not horribly tight. That is a Torx, by the way, so if you tighten them down too hard, then uh, you're going to break the Torx bit, and it's going to make it really difficult to get off. So, this is now mounted. All I've got to do is find my clip like this, position it here. This is, this is easier said than done. And I'll uh, see if you can wiggle this back on. There's a way you can do this that makes it easy. I have not yet found it. There, we got one in, and I think that's the secret is you get one in, and then you can kind of tap the other one in place. There it goes. There, it's in. So, 
All I got to do now is put my caps back on. Do not want to forget those because you want it to be sealed away from the grime and dust that the road is definitely going to be putting on it. Got those caps back on. Now I'm going to put the tire back on and go do the other side. But that's it. It's getting hot out here. I'm sweating. But that's all there is to it, really. Um, take your time. Remember what you're doing. Take pictures if you've never done it before, but it's not that difficult to do. And these things are going to look fantastic on here, I tell you. I, I just love the way this black looks. I'm going to do some touch-up on my uh, caliper paint before I put the tire back on. And then uh, we're good to go. Thanks for watching, guys.